Good morning. Welcome to Daily Devotions. We're going to be in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 this morning, and I promise I'll try to be shorter than last time. I looked at the time stamp and I was 24 minutes, and that gets a little bit lengthy on a quick morning devotion. But let's look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 this morning, and we're going to look at verses 14 through 24. It's a passage regarding Christian conduct or having Christ-like behavior. And I'm going to focus on one phrase and then give you uh, three ways that we can accomplish that, all right? So let's look at verse 14. It says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Rejoice evermore, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Quench not the spirit, despise not prophesyings, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from all appearance of evil. The very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God that your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless under the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, who also will do it. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. May the spirit of God fill me and teach us today. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. The Apostle Paul is writing to the church of Thessalonica, and as he often does and gets to the end of his letters, he gives a little exhortation, maybe some loose ends he's tying up. And so at the end, he says, Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none render evil for evil unto any man. But here's what I want to focus on. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. Let me read that again. Verse 15, the last part. But ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. You'll notice that he says, brethren, Brethren, verse 14, now we exhort you, brethren. If you were to go back and read verses 12 and 13, you'd see that he mentions the work of the clergy. But now he's talking about the work of church people, brethren. Those who are saved, those who are gathered together in Christian brotherhood, and, and those that have gathered in fellowship, uh, he says, here's what I need you to do. Warn them that are unruly. In the local church, we ought to police ourselves a little bit. Sometimes we look to the Pope, but I, I remember a time where there was an outburst in church and somebody got angry about something and everybody kind of looked at him and then they turned and they looked at me. And I, I remember in, in Stony Creek, we had a church that in Hamilton, when we moved into Hamilton, our church opened right up on the sidewalk in a kind of a rough area of town. And we had a lot of people come into church that sometimes were just coming to get warm. Uh, they might be an alcoholic and they might have been drunk right then. They might have been on drugs there in church. We had a prostitute come off the street and, and, and sit in. And, and almost every time that happened, halfway through, they'd get angry about something I said, something I was preaching from the word of God. And they'd get up and they'd shout at me and yell at me. And people would turn and look at them and then they'd look at me. And they're as much saying, well, what are you going to do about that, pastor? The Bible says that we're to kind of police that. We ought to take care. If somebody's out of sorts, you ought to try to go over and help them and encourage them a little bit and see if you can help. He says, we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men, see that none render evil for evil unto any man, help people show restraint, but ever follow that which is good both among yourselves and to all men. And so he concludes with this thought, follow that which is good. How are we to do that? Well, the next three uh, designations I'm going to give you, he, I'll give you each paragraph. The apostle has put these things in each paragraph. And I would say the first way we follow that which is good is simply be glad. Be glad. Look at verse 16. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. So look at that first one. When we're talking about being glad, how, how can we follow what is good? We, we rejoice every more. Be glad in your hearts. 
You know, there's so much negativity in the world today and people walk around angry about everything and I, I get caught in those ruts too. I, I know sometimes I'm talking to my wife and I get on and on and I'm thinking, boy, all I'm talking about, I'm just angry about everything. Why don't, why don't we rejoice in evermore? Why don't we rejoice in the Lord? Why don't we look around and say, this is the day the Lord hath made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And look at all the blessings God has given me and all the things he's done for me. And so Paul is saying to the church of Thessalonica, if you're going to follow that which is good, you first have to be glad. Rejoice. Pray without ceasing. And when you pray in everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. In everything, not for everything. We're not thankful for everything that comes our way, cancer and things like that. But in that situation, you can still find things to be thankful for. So number one, if we're going to follow that, which is good, we, we need to be glad. Number two, we need to be guided. Look at the next paragraph, which starts in verse 19. Quench not the spirit. Be guided. That's what the Spirit of God does. He's a guiding light for us. He illuminates the scripture. He speaks in that still small voice and he convicts our conscience and he reproves the work of darkness in our lives. And so he is guiding us on a day-by-day -day basis. But when we quench the Spirit, when we repeatedly say no to those pleadings in our lives, eventually they have no more hold on us. He says, quench not the Spirit. You need to be guided. If you're going to follow that, which is good, number two, despise not prophesying. Verse 20, that means you need to get under preaching. Prophesying, I've said many times, is not necessarily. Listen, this whole book is prophecy. It means that was given by God. And uh, I've said many times that the Old Testament prophet prophesies the same way the New Testament prophet does. The Old Testament prophets received from God and he gave it to the people. The New Testament prophet is to receive from God and give it to the people. Our source is different. We don't have direct revelation to God, like a, from God, like Elijah or Elisha might have. But we have the revelation that was received from God in his holy word. And so we are to get under the preaching of God's word. We're not to despise going to church. We're not to despise. You say, well, I, I don't like it. Sometimes that preacher, the, the Holy Spirit convicts me. And sometimes I, I want to crawl under the pew. And sometimes my toes hurt. Hey, thank God. We're not to despise prophesying because it is a guide in our lives. We're to be guided. Verse 21, prove all things. That word prove is like a jeweler looking at a rare precious metal or a a, a, a precious stone. And he's proving that stone to make sure it is authentic. And we are to prove all things. We are to make sure that we are uh, testing things by God's word. And, and so we, we look at this and it's all the same, isn't it? Quench not the spirit. He teaches us God's word. Despise not prophesying. Preaching gives us God's word. Prove all things. Judge everything in light of God's word. And hold fast. So when you find something authentic, hold fast to that which is good. Verse 22, abstain from all appearance of evil. You know, the best way to keep out of trouble is to stay a long way from it. Uh, last summer, our son spent working in Hawaii. And he'd, be on, he'd call us. He'd be on a hike somewhere up to a volcano or something. And he'd send us FaceTime. He'd get on his phone and call us. And we'd say, where are you? And he'd say, well, he'd show us. And he'd look down. And he was that far from the edge of a volcano and we say, Austin, back up. Please, back up. And our hearts were in our throats. He was scaring us how close he was to the edge. But you know, a lot of people, that's how they treat sin. They get right up to the edge. They say, well, you know what? Your standards and the lines that you have drawn, that's all right for your family, but we're going to go over here. Listen, be careful how close you get. Because he says, abstain from all appearance of evil. It ought not look like sin is your backdrop because you're so close to it. Be careful and abstain. So be, be glad and be guided. And I want to see, just see the last thing he says in the next paragraph is verses 23 and 24. If we're going to follow that, which is good, we need to be glad. We need to be guided. We need to be guarded. What he says in verse 23, the very God of peace, what's that next word? Sanctify. That means to set you apart. Sanctify you wholly, and I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved. That is the outward acting of God upon your life 
to preserve you blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. In other words, we need to surrender to God, allow him to sanctify us and preserve us and to keep us from evil. We need to listen to that still small voice. We need to get into the Bible, let the Holy Spirit reprove wickedness in our lives that we might follow after that, which is good. That's all I have for you today. And I understand I've already gone over my time, but I just want to encourage you today that Paul, like Paul encouraged the church of Thessalonica, follow after that which is good today. Be glad. That's a great place to start. Rejoice in the Lord. You know, the more you sing those old hymns and those choruses in your heart and, and, and just let the joy of the Lord fill you, the other stuff starts getting easier. The Holy Spirit moves in. You know that there's a direct connection between the Spirit of God and music. The Bible says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit of God, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. There's a joy that comes when you're filled with the Spirit of God. And it brings music into our hearts. God puts a song in your heart. And when we are joyful and glad and rejoice in God's Holy Spirit works and He teaches us His Word and He guards us through sanctification and preserving us by So go take on your day and follow that which is good. Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. Bless it now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great day.